let's do this. I haven't set this up with Chewy. We sometimes do uh, Discord on on the Thursday night. We're just wrapping up. You know, it's 10 o'clock. We've got 10, 15 minutes. Chewy, let's do an AMA. Let's do an Ask Me Anything. Just with people mm. who are watching right now in the chat. Don't have to do a super chat. We'll keep an eye on it. I'm going to read these two other super chats. If you've got a question you want to ask, doesn't have to be political, an AMA, you can, are you all right with this, Chewy? Yeah, fine. It doesn't. It I'm doesn't mean we'll book. necessarily answer it, um, but if you want to try an AMA and ask ask me anything, an AUA, ask us anything. Do a question in the chat right now because there's just people asking us questions in the super chat. So let's just do a let's just do that. Ten fifteen minutes, Chewy. You keep an eye on the chat while I do these two super chats. And um, if you've got a burning question, it can be about you know what we do here. It can be more personal. It can be which, like anything. Ask us anything, and um, we'll just be here for another ten or fifteen minutes, and we'll do that because that's the end of our stories. Um, yep. So here's the here's the first question uh, uh, from Ziggy. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Duncan Garner said the evolution of media going digital has been on the cards for years, but the media acted like they were too big to fail. Do you guys agree slash disagree? Well, I'll start with this one, Joe, because it's exactly what I said last night and what I said uh, on the clip that's out there at the moment, which is what responsibility does news have, have in this? And that's they should have been talking about digital 10 years ago because um, everyone else saw it coming. And, and when I worked in radio, and I think I finished in 2011, 2012, I was saying there when they were all talking about digital radio, no, no, just go straight to the internet. The internet is where you got to be. I was saying that in 2011. So, yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't know if it's because they thought they were too big to fail, um, but there was a reason for, um, there is a reason for management haven't done enough to get prepared for that. Shall we? Hmm. Um, yeah, look, I, I do agree. Um, what we saw during the 90s in radio was small regional radio stations getting gathered up into a, a loose configuration into a network and then codified into a big network run out of Auckland. Um, it, it was a bad time, bad thing to do. Um, during the 90s, we saw, you know, TV3, TV4 pop up. You saw a, a couple of other small attempts at doing television and that sort of thing. But yeah, everybody got too comfortable yeah. that there wasn't any need for change. And part of that is is their fault. Part of that's the government's fault. You know, you look at um, the argument of like, oh, maybe we should, should have stopped Google and Facebook skimming our news for free. Yeah, we should have done that years ago. Um, but yeah, it's it's the idea of being agile and responsive to threats and changes to the market. I don't think our broadcasting industry has been. Yeah. Okay, another question from Ian here. Uh, Ian also did a super chat. Um, this AMA, you don't need to do a super chat, but this is, gave me the idea, so thank you for it anyway. Um, I'd love to take on not just bikes and strong towns uh, examination of strodes and building den density. What's up with cutting 50k off job speaker? I don't know what language is this, Joey, but I don't understand any of this. Do you understand what's going on here? Uh, I've got to be honest, no. All right. Ian, we can't no. answer your question. You're too smart for us. Yeah, sorry, buddy. I'd love, I'd love you to take on Not Just Bikes and capital NJB. So that's why don't you look up Not Just Bikes mm. and Strong Towns, examination of strodes and building density. Uh, what's up with cutting fifty thousand off job seeker? Well, while um while Chewie's doing that, I'll go. I don't know. I don't know what talking about. Okay. Sorry, dude. A strode is a type of thoroughfare that is a mix between a street and a road, common okay. in the USA and Canada, often wide arterials. Okay. I liked. Um, I was in mm. Queenstown in the weekend, and I like the oh. uh, co the cobbled areas in Queenstown where you don't actually realise you're on the road. And I tell you something about Queenstown locals. I, I suspect there are more pedestrians hitting Queenstown per capita than anywhere in the world because they do not look and they just walk in front of you. Uh, but we we're about to get that here in Dunedin as well, Chewy, that kind of cobbled one ways through the shopping precinct. And it's yeah. sort of a mix of a road and a walkway. And I, I, and I saw it in action in Queenstown. And people were just wandering across the actual road part because there was no delineation between the road and the footpath. And it, it made for quite a quite a nice kind of walking slash driving period. I, I drove through there as well. We were driving the EV, so I had to, of course, uh, be very, very careful because people didn't hear us coming up behind them on you, those you roads. You your own noises. <laughs> <laughs> Lend um, the window. Do you know what? It, this just made me thought, think. Um, the, the one thing surprised me when I went to, to the USA is um, – how I, I was expecting the opposite of this, right? How pedestrian focused drivers were. Yeah. 
like we were given way to by vehicles in instances that I wouldn't have expected that here, which was kind of embarrassing. Right. Like I think New Zealand, we're very pedestrian hostile. Um, I, uh, w- while I was looking up Strode's, by the way, yeah, um, I think I found the video that uh, that fellow was talking about um, because it's it's by a channel called Not Just Bikes. Oh, there you so go. I put I put that. Okay, link so in the okay, so making sense now. The Not Just Bikes will be something to do with not only bikes on this part of the thoroughfare, Strode's. Mm. That's making yeah. more sense now. Uh, we will look into that some more. Um, yeah, nice, nice. All right, let's get some of these questions, shall we? Uh, 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 um, here's one. Here's a good one. That's a bit of a not to do with anything we're talking about. What's your style of comedy, Chewy? Um, so I tend to tell stories, um, and, and that's kind of what got me into comedy. Quite often at parties, I'd just be re- regaling people with stories of experiences that I've had and that sort of thing. Um, I think the closest I've seen and the best compliment that I ever got is that I reminded someone of Bert Kreischer and oh, yeah. his comedy of telling like really extravagant stories. The machine. Um, so, so yeah, that, that's kind of my style. I think there's a, there's another question that that's sort of segues into that as well from Nick. Uh, why don't you record your standout for your YouTube channel anymore? would love to see you on stage um yes if you found my youtube channel yes there are some uh, some old clips there the 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 whole reason for that is i just haven't really done much stand-up since covid um it took a while to come back the fringe festivals i was doing more judging and that sort of thing and i had some personal issues going on around that time that just didn't make me feel particularly funny um so i'm thinking maybe in the later half of this year i'll blow some of the cobwebs off and get back into it all right, I quite like this question. I just saw one. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to find it there, am I? Because I've gone off it. Um, oh no, here it is. Uh, uh, that one. How? I'm asking you this question, so you'll have to answer it. How much traffic are you getting through YouTube uh, clips lately? You going to answer that, Joey? Do you want to? Do you want to take that one? Oh, through through what BHN clips? I yeah. have no idea. I don't watch the metric, but um, looking looking at that clip, that uh, by the way, I love the headline that you put on it. That little twenty minute clip, Brooke Van Velden is embarrassingly stupid. Um, <laughs> it's a bit mean. I do feel a bit mean. I'm not. I don't normally do that. But look, I, I think we've been really gentle with Brooke for a for a good while, and there just comes a point where you, I think you just got to go. You're fucking stupid. Like you know, naive, innocent, inexperienced. You can use all these other words, but there's just a point where you got to go. Yeah, you're not. You're. I'm, I'm going to have to say though, Pat, it worked because that's almost got three thousand views in, in a day. Um, we usually <laughs> they're around a thousand within a day. So yeah, we're yeah. getting about two hundred thousand YouTube only views. Like so, that's only on YouTube. That doesn't include Twitter. Or, we're getting about two hundred thousand a um a month, sort of. Uh, we we were getting about 150 to 175 it now feels 175 to 200 and uh last month i kind of just ticked over the 200,000 so i've just had a look i've just i'm on uh, youtube right now uh we've got a million in the last year and the thing about this Jeez. my you the youtube channel that i that i own right that i started up in 2018 um has a total lifetime a total of uh 1.3 million views that's since 2018 in the last 12 months we've had a million so that goes to show sort of what bhn has done compared to other stuff we were doing and it's now Still two, close to me away. it's now announced two hundred thousand a month so that's that, if that continued on that's 2.4 million in the next 12 months so um i mean look that's not a braggadocious thing because there are lots of people out there with far larger stations or far larger audiences than us but we also get about a half million views 400 to seven hundred thousand views a month on tiktok and they're just just BHN stuff, and um, about 150,000 views a month on Twitter. So if you add them all up, we're probably, let's say, I'll be un- I'll, I'll under be under generous and then be realistic at the top end, between 500,000 and 800,000 video clips uh, a month across all of our platforms. Oh. That's, what I, that's what I would say. Yeah. So. And, and, and it still blows me away that this this little niche new zealand politics project that we started and who knows if we'll be doing it for six months or whatever is still going and it's still growing 
Yeah. Um, someone mentioned at the top of the show, oh, did you notice that you were doing some numbers on, on NZ Poll and Reddit uh, today? And yes, I did notice. Um, <laughs> uh, I got a kick out of that. I think nice. that's one of the front few page. So we're on the front page of the internet as well. That's good. Uh, yeah, sure. This is not so much a question, uh, but just a demand um, by Joseph Fletcher, five dollars. Actually, done exactly. Um, this is just this is an, another one. Might not look like it, but there's two separate ones here that say exactly. So it's actually ten dollars. Tips for Chewy to wriggle his hairy toes. Doesn't say you got to show them, Chewy. Just got to wriggle them. So if you oh, wriggle okay. them, okay. Well, uh, I'm claiming that money then because oh, I am currently Easy. wriggling them. Here's one that you're probably more in tune with than I. Um, are you worried about your Eve? About your EV is worth mm. fuck all when you come to sell. Um, you won't be. No, because you got no. you got the um, smoking of steel of the world. I I, I think. Well, yes, the, I, I did get a very good deal on my one. Um, I'm not worried about it, to be honest. I didn't buy it considering the resale value. I bought it to buy an EV, and I'll probably run it until I can't run it anymore. Um, you know, I, I look at things like that, like you're paying to get the use of it, not that it's it's the cars aren't an appreciating, <laughs> you know, an, a, an appreciating product um so you know i'm just going to drive it see how long it lasts and, and that sort of thing and at this stage for a 2018 model ev so not even a new one with a smaller battery that's done at this stage 135,000 kilometers has zero battery degradation and i think the battery is still in warranty i had a I had a look the other day because i was having a an argument with someone over youtube that oh, i'll have to replace the battery soon if I did, if the battery on it died tomorrow, uh, a replacement battery is about five thousand dollars. Oh, yeah, and I don't, I don't see that question being directed at people buying secondhand cars and go, ah, what if the engine fails? What yeah. if the transmission shits out? You know, <laughs> if something big like that fails, you weigh up whether you are junking the car or paying for the thing to go in it. So it's the same as any other vehicle. Yeah, and uh, and it kind of goes hand in hand with us. Uh, what EV did you buy? And that's me from Alistair. Mm. Um, you guys who have been with us for a while will know that my dad passed away June of last year, and there was a very small amount of money in um, in his estate, and I put that in part towards an EV, and I got a Volkswagen ID four. Um, on on was, a really good deal. Yeah, it was because because the new ones about to come out, and they were basically mm. selling them at a loss. So I got a Volkswagen ID4. Um, and my thing, and I'm not like Chewy, like I'm not fully into the, the the what do you call it? Into the weeds? Into the weeds with EVs. Although when you get one, you be, you become more in the weeds. It's just part of the process. But I always said to Chewy, I want range versus price. I don't really care about the, you know, about the, um, the looks or the speed or all those, you know, things you talk about with Teslas and stuff. And this one was a very good deal. I mean, Chewy will tell you that even though it was probably a little bit more than I wanted to spend. Um, but its range is 520 Ks. Queenstown and one hit with 30. So we drove Dunedin to Queenstown and there was 30% left in the battery. And I know that you don't have to have good range like that. Chewy talks it to me all the time. It's like, I oh, know you go here and you stop 15, you go here. I'm like, I guess the one thing I wanted was I wanted to be able to go from A to B should I want to in one hit. And I thought Queenstown, Christchurch, the two places. And that's, so that's what I got. I mean, I did a right with that, HO. You think it's the right yeah. one? Oh, no, I think it was a good deal. And, you know, you're you're coming from a very particular style of driving, whereas I'm a new driver. So yeah. driving a car, the EV way of doing it, I don't find it a big adjustment because that's just the way that it is. The vehicle that I have is a 2018 Hyundai Ioniq. Um, and because of the type of person that I am, I did all of my own research. I hyper-focused on it. I had so many alerts on Trade Me looking for the exact right model. Um, I spent about eight months looking for it. I didn't go see one going for less than $27,000 for months and months and months and months. And then my alert pinged up and said that there was one for sale for $18,000 and I jumped on it. Yeah. And I love it. 100%. Um, here's a question. It's in the ballot. Is BHN required to be GST registered? Hmm. Okay. Um, so I have a media company, which has been around since I worked in radio. And my media company, and since I've been in Dunedin, has been working with businesses, helping them with their radio advertising and, and podcasting as well. 
that business company is GST registered um, and BHN comes under it. So BHN is not as per se GST registered, but um, the company that I guess is above it, you know, that it, that it make, the company that makes it is, if that makes sense. That makes sense, Joey? That makes sense. Yeah. Um, da -da 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 -da. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Well, I like this one. Um, Pat, who do you consider to be New Zealand's best ever broadcaster? Chewie, who was a, a big one. influence upon your political ideology while growing up? I think probably, mm -hmm. it's probably quite easy for the greatest ever broadcaster. If you're just using that term, it's Paul Holmes. Paul Holmes is New Zealand's greatest ever broadcaster. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I mean, who else? Think about it. Think about what he did. And I talked about him the other night because he wasn't just a, he wasn't just very good at what he did, but he's also a likable guy. I'll tell you another story about Paul Holmes. So we used to have the radio awards every year. And of course, everyone would go and everyone would go along. Paul Holmes, obviously. Paul Holmes had so much money. Newstalk ZB gave, paid him so much money that w one of his contract re-signs, they gave him a Bentley as part of his re-sign. They didn't lease him a Bentley. They purchased him a Bentley, Newstalk ZB, as a part of a sale. He had squillions of dollars, like what you expect to see media people in America kind of have. And um, But he, was, he, he always had that element of realness to him. And there's a story that a whole bunch of the boys from ZM, right, so kind of youthish station, 20-something radio station, lived in the same road as Holmesy did when he was in Remawera. And, of course, the, all of the boys from ZM who lived there, like there would have been eight, six of them living in a four-bedroom so they could afford it, right? But it was in the same same one as Holmesy. Something happened after a radio, um, radio awards or something, and the story goes that he was walking down the road with them or traveling down the road, and he invited them all in. And then all of these ZM boys just went into Holmesy's mansion and they just drunk all night long and um, had a blast. And then they went home and they went their own ways. He was just, he wasn't just a great broadcaster. He was a, he was a great broadcaster, but he was also, um, yeah, a really decent human being. As much as people probably think he's a bit of a wanker and arrogance, he wasn't. When, uh, I'll tell you some inside the, uh, uh, behind the curtain stuff that I probably shouldn't tell you, that when Mike Hosking took over after that, uh, Mike Hosking is so aloof and so unfriendly that at one point management had to tell him when he comes in at four o'clock in the morning he needs to talk to people in the newsroom <laughs> and not just be like he didn't necessarily treat anyone bad but not just isolate himself whereas Holmesy would come in and he'd spend all the time just talking to everyone you know and mm. chilling out and talking it was it was a real different vibe anyway so i would i would say paul holmes that's what i'd say anyway chewy that was a long run um who was a big influence on my po political ideology um i think i've mentioned it once before on on, on the show i and i kicked myself i absolutely can't remember his name but he was he was my fifth form high school history teacher oh. um and i i remember the module that we were doing i i think it was the uh russian revolution and 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 we were covering 20th century history. So I, I, that's where I've got a, a, a deep and abiding love of 20th century history, right. um, my war history and that sort of thing, and how things flow into each other and it's all cause and effect and that sort of thing. But because of that, we covered the Russian Revolution, we covered socialism, that sort of thing. And there was a lot of discussion about that as a as an ideology, as a, as a system and the pros and cons and um how like a lot of systems it can be corrupted and you're concentrating a lot of power in the hands of few and the risks that come with that and i found that really interesting um just to jump off pat's question as well i put john campbell out there to be honest uh as a broadcaster and and another person that had quite an effect on my political ideology growing up as being a, a very keen or someone that was very keen on broadcasting um as friend of the show bomber no, oh, no, nice. well, you used, told me that. I <laughs> love watching, uh, sorry, listening to Bomber's um, Sunday night uh, talk back on Channel Z. When I, uh, and I would have been the, sitting in the studio with him, Joey. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I love I love this ridiculously small little country. Um, <laughs> and I just have to um, go back to the previous question uh, about the battery replacement. Um, whoever said um, that they are nowhere near that cheap. You're exactly right. I was looking at the price of a hybrid replacement battery. Uh, much smaller. Um, so, so much smaller, and it mm. was also in US dollars. So I don't know how much a, a, a replacement cost for a battery is. Um, cross that bridge when I come to it many, many years down the track. 
flicking through the um the the chat here it seems that the other name that a lot of people are mentioning is john campbell so it seems like mm. most people are either saying holmes or campbell there's a philip sherry in yep. there and some other bits and pieces but that that those are the two that seem to be getting the the most uh, mentions um what about this one there's another mr arvid thank you for the super chat didn't need to do that but thank you uh thoughts on the political pendulum theory i don't want to be vindictive I just want to survive. Seems Chippy is missing in action, though. So mm. is anybody going to swing the pendulum even a little bit? Our left is failing us. Um, well, you, I've, I've started each of these through. You go first, because I've got some theories around the pendulum. Yeah, I, I, I think we've kind of touched on this before, right? The, 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 the left can be really sensitive to criticism. Um, and they don't want to be seen as being too left or too, too, too many radical things. And they want to be seen as in the centre. And then when the right gets in, they're like, well, we're in, fuck all of you, we'll do what we want. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. So every time that pendulum swings back to the left, they kind of stop it. They, they don't keep that momentum going. Um, and yeah, I'm concerned about that. I, I, I really am, because if, if they're not, you know, there's a danger to both of it, right? They're just these even more dramatic swings in policy. You know, I'd love it if if there was, you know, a pathway through there where both sides of the political spectrum could pull their heads out of their asses and going, well, this is actually <laughs> damaging to the country. That, that's wishful thinking. And unless I do get elected as um, supreme leader, um, I don't really see a pathway through. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. like I... I, I People have been mentioning that Chippy's MIA, and yeah, it does seem that way. Maybe there's a reason for it, but um, I'm seeing radio silence. I'm seeing other ministers hitting back at, at National, but we're not seeing it for the leader of the opposition. And I don't know if that's just me missing it or whether that's actually what you guys have experienced or what Pat has seen. Um, so this election that's just gone is a little bit outside what I've witnessed over the past 20 30 years mm. what i think happens right is a a government will get elected when it comes quite close to the center so what typically happens is that government gets a center elected either center left or center right they're quite moderate and then they spend the next three six nine months moving further and further and further to their natural position and then they end up being further to the left and they get voted out. But whilst they've been further to the left and get voted out, the guys who went further to the right have started moving back and back and back and back and back and closer to the centre. And then when they're closer to the centre, they get elected. And then they start moving over time back to the right. And while they're moving back to it further to the right, the guys that just lost start moving back towards the centre. And I reckon the pendulum is a bit like that. I reckon you get a centre-left government, um, that's my right hand, a centre-left government um, elected and then they start moving back to where they're naturally sitting because the alt-right government just got voted out and then mm. whilst they're moving back to the left the alt-right government is starting to come back towards the center and then they get elected and then they start moving back to their natural position and while they're doing that the left comes back to the center and then they get elected so that's what i reckon it is i reckon it's like this um and in fact i guess even though i've just said this election feels quite different maybe not so much maybe the difference is these guys that got elected would normally take six years to get back to where they've got to in six months maybe that's the difference but maybe they were i mean they weren't pitching a centrist message but maybe for some voters they felt like it was more centrist as opposed to all those woke lefties um and normally what you're seeing now which is quite far right ideologies might normally take a whole three year cycle or six year cycle to get to and then they get voted out so that that's what i kind of think about the pendulum when it comes to voting you know it does make me wonder you know uh what we would be getting if it was just national yeah you know um but I, I think some of the the extreme things that we've seen are definitely core national policies. Mm. You know, we've seen the smaller parties sort of go, well, maybe now is not the time for tax cuts, but but national are hell for leather for them. So, yeah. Um, there's a super chat here. It was not really a question, but thank you for the super chat, Tina, $5. Well, we aren't there yet, but at the end of the world, it will only be about relationships. That came in at about uh, five past ten. I can't remember exactly what we were talking about. We were doing the AMA by then, I guess. But yep. what were we talking about right at the start? 
It's all about relationships. Anyway, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, there's one more here about getting into the broadcasting. Is there any, I'm, I'm only looking at the starred chats. Is there any in the live mm. chats that you particularly want to put up before we head off? Oh, I've been trying to start the, the, the ones that okay. I, I reckon would be a good answer. So here's here's the last one. Because uh, Chewy, you've done a broadcasting. I never I never did. I went straight from hosting Juice TV for working to more FM. I've never done a, done a day's work or training to be in broadcasting, but I can give you some thoughts. Any tips uh, getting into broadcasting industry? Radio graduate here. And the employment in the industry at the moment is come mm. and go with very little roles going, especially entry level. Sure, you've done that. What do you think? I I would hate to be doing that at the moment. Like it must be so grim. Um, yeah. Look, when I when I went to study broadcasting, it was in the early two thousands. It was a very different industry then. But even at that stage, my experience after I exited that industry was I was about ten years too late for what I thought it was. <laughs> um so when i got in it was full of the guys that were like you just got to stick your hand out you got just got to get your foot in the door any job that you can get in the building and then you can and that was broadly speaking true i i didn't go to broadcasting school i did a a polytech course in television theater and radio i specialized in radio in my second year Uh, One of the reasons that I did that course is that I knew that the campus was the floor above uh, Radio Works here in Dunedin. So anytime they needed someone for an outside broadcast or to put on the birthday bear costume or give away prizes in in, in the edge vehicle, they would come and grab one of us. So that was my foot in the door. I got hired as a copywriter before I had graduated hilariously hired before i'd finished my copywriting module (laughs) um so so that's that's how i got my foot in the door and then my pathway from that stage was to jump on any on-ear experience that i could get so i was doing 4xo's request show on a sunday night i was being the fill-in announcer and then when the breakfast position in Big River Radio Balclutha came up, I Big jumped River on it. Big River Radio. That was, you'll love this, Pat, that shift was from 5.30 in the morning mm-hmm. till 1 in the afternoon mm-hmm. by myself yep. with no automation. Um, yep. And I just got absolutely taken advantage of just being just so happy to be part of it and all of that sort of stuff. Out of my class... I think two thirds of that class found employment very, very quickly in the industry. A year later, there were three left. Yeah. Um, admittedly, one of them is doing very well. Um, Samantha Hayes uh, was well, in the ha- journalism has done, part of my course. Has done very well. Ha- has done hap- very well. See what happens. I mean, no, no, I'm not saying this in joking, but see what happens for old Sam come July, which is a very sad thought. But yeah, be, being someone that has has followed that pathway, you know, twenty plus years ago, and looking at someone like yourself that has done it now, I I don't know. All of my experience, I think, is irrelevant. Um, I I still think getting once you're in the beast, it it, it is much easier. Yeah. Uh, but with so few roles and with so many, so much contraction of the industry, and now a flood of talent that is now looking for work. That's that's devastating and that this is what we won't see new talent come forward they'll go somewhere else they'll go over to to australia and try their hand there because there's more networks there there's more outlets there that's actually a probably a almost a good piece of advice i got offered jobs in australia uh working in the outback and there's part of me which kind of wishes i had to take it now because it would have been an adventure um, i can't think of the name of the town but it's the name of the town that started off with Qantas. it's got my we call it long reach something like that mm. and i and i never did it that, it, it must be it, it almost feels a little bit like chewy um someone who's just um graduated and how did the de- de- develop film like as in camera film just as digital cameras are starting to take off you know what do i do mm. that's what this kind of feels like at the moment because What's happening in the industry is the industry is getting smaller and smaller, but the tertiary institutions are pushing out more and more graduates. So I look on some level, I'm the wrong person to talk to because I people hate me who, who were in the industry because I was kind of the last person to get in with no qualifications. I walked into more FM Auckland um, 
under the under the guise of can I ask some advice? Uh, and went and spoke to the program director there and said, oh, look, I'm doing this stuff on Juice TV. I'm just quite keen to figure out what I need to do. And after a 10-minute conversation, he said, well, just come on board with us and we'll train you up. And that was it. That was how I got in. Yeah. And so I remember talking to other guys who were, you know, full-timers and stuff at that radio station at the time. They were like, how the hell did you do this? And I'm like, ah, just kind of walked in. Um, because this this PD had, you know, CVs every week coming across his desk that he just and I just, so purely circumstantial, nothing I did, nothing of who I was. They had no idea what I'd do. And from there, it kind of turned into a, I guess, a 15 or 20 year career uh, working for music radio and for talk radio. And what I've done is now try and be in, as independent as possible. I can only imagine coming out as a 19, 20, 21 year old thinking about wanting to get into it. I mean, he, so this is what I do. I do what Chewy did. Chewy started up his own thing. Didn't you? You started up a radio station, a low power FM. Do do something. Yeah, I, it's a it's I a had bit a like it's a it's a bit like if you that. were someone who wanted to be a professional football player, but you couldn't get employed to be a, be a professional football player, you'd probably play football anyway. Do it anyway. Figure yeah. out something to do. And, and, and that's absolutely what happened happened with us. Basically, all of those people that I mentioned that fucked out of the industry and just went, "Oh, this was horrible, a horrible, horrible experience." I remember we we all met up at. Um, at a cafe here in Dunedin and just shared just traumatic war stories of it. And then we, we kind of went, Oh God, didn't we have, have like for my course, our graduating thing was creating branding, selling and running a radio station for a month. And we decided to basically, because I can be a very forceful personality, rip off, um, rip off channel Z because it wasn't in Dunedin. And so we just did a punk and, and, and hard rock, radio station um and we had it we had a great time um and so when we got together we go well since we're not doing anything why don't we just do that and we bought a bunch of dodgy chinese equipment and we rented a small uh, room in an old high school down here uh, we scaled up to the roof and attached uh, an aerial to a half rotten flagpole and almost died um, and then we ran that radio station for five years on the smell of an oily rag. We we made enough money to keep us in beer and 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 rent. Hey, yeah. Um, and we 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 absolutely lived for free uh, big day out tickets. We loved those media passes, um, and, and just played the music that we wanted to hear until yeah. like a lot of things personalities got in the way and it blew apart. But I have very, very fond memories. Anybody of my vintage in Dunedin, it was uh, Inferno 107 FM. And we, had the, we had the great slogan, it's hot. Because <laughs> we were uh, marketing the other, geniuses. The other thing, I guess, as well, is the the entry to doing something these days is, is nothing. Like the mm. entry to making a podcast is one of these. Mm. That's it. So it's not like even what Chewie's talking about, having to, you know, get equipment you you can literally mm. do whatever you want on your phone and upload things and get podcasting and so this has been a very long answer but just do something do something yep. and do something you love people used to ask me about how i used to come up with so many topics when i was doing talk pack and i went i just talk about what i like i just talk about what interests me and what interests me hopefully will find an audience and it did and it was fine. It's a little bit like what we're doing here. It's not necessarily just what interests us, but it's the things that grab us that we talk about. And, and, and yep. you know, it's building an audience.